All right, fuckers and fuckettes, now. I just learned, was reminded of a very painful lesson, expensive one, that I learned a long time ago. The number one cause of coils failing is uh, these little boots, spark plug boots, have a resistor in them. It's been in there since the 70s. It's some FCC bullshit. And you don't really need it. You can run it straight and get away with it. But what happens inside these... See, there's a spring. That's to keep contact. There's a resistor. And then there's a screw-in thingy that holds all that mess. And I don't care what the right name for that screw-in thingy that holds all that mess is. I'm a fucking redneck. That's a screw-in thingy that holds all that mess. Anyway, spring goes in, resistor goes in, and then you screw in thingy that holds all that mess goes in. Screw it in with a flat screwdriver. And now, some guys think, oh man, I'll just test the resistor, and if that's okay, ah, uh, uh, motherfucker, don't do that shit. Test the boot. Put one probe and one probe, and you should get 5,000 ohms, which this one does not. Now, I already know that this resistor is good, but the contact in here is broken. That's why you test the boot. That little jump spark in there is enough to fuck up a coil. Now sometimes you can take contact cleaner and squirt in there and clean it out and get it fixed, but that only lasts a little while. That's just to get home because they will corrode again almost immediately. Um, that's personal experience talking. I built my first fucking motorcycle when I was six years old. I've been riding them ever since. And you better believe my four-wheel vehicles, yeah, you know, I don't even have one. I'm the guy that goes to the fucking racetrack with the race bike on the trailer behind the gold wing. And anyway, now I had forgotten on this bike to check these boots before I started the bike. So yeah, I did have it running the other day, and then I fried a coil. Well, when I fried the coil on this side, it took out the ignition box, um, which happens a lot. I mean, like on the little Honda flat CDI boxes, like uh, what you see on the um, late 70s, well into the 80s, and even on that uh, 80 Goldwing, I got those same boxes. Man, I've run them fucking things with crack coils. That CB900 of mine cracked a coil and didn't hurt that CDI box one bit. Um, well, Anyway, if you got the flat pack, one of these fancy electronic CDI or TDI boxes, and you blow a coil, about seven times out of ten, you've lost a fucking ignition box. Um, and we've already replaced the ignition box. That was expensive. Replacement coils, XL has quit making the um, single tower coils like they used to make which I think is a crying shame. I mean, now all they've got is the double towers. I mean, you can always use a Harley single fire coil, but then you've got one mounted out front there, you know, and that just, that doesn't look right on a vintage piece like this. But the important thing is to match your owns. And me personally, when I need a single tower coil, I kind of lean towards these Yamaha um, tech coils because when your battery's a little bit low, they will fire your bike. Whereas if you get an aftermarket MGO coil and your battery's say at 11.5 volts because the bike's been sitting a month or two, um, the chances are you hit that starter button, you ain't gonna have enough spark to start the bike. Um, and Dyna, Dyna does make a single tower coil still to this day. Um, but I've had really bad luck with Dyna products overall. I mean, 
they're an aftermarket racing coil. They're not really intended for the guy who rides them every day. And I mean, the best I've ever gotten out of a Dyna coil was about six months. Um, and that may be a quality control issue on their part, I don't know. But I just honestly believe that they weren't intended to be used on daily drivers. Um, so I favor these tech coils off of Yamaha's and you can pull them off of a Vision um, or do like we did and just order them in um, for a Virago and they work beautifully. Cold mornings, fuck, you can have that battery down at 10 volts, hit that starter button, the motherfucker will start. MGO can't make that claim. Um, and uh, anyway, on the Yamaha coils, the trigger wire is always the orange one, and the other wire is the other wire. It's constant. But um, when you go to figure out which one's which coming away from your Suzuki or Honda or Kawasaki, blah, 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 um, figure out which one's always got juice. Or, in some cases, depending on the ignition box in question, figure out which one is ground. I mean, use your meter. Just set it on volts, DC, and check. I mean, either you're going to have one that's constant hot, or you're going to have one that's constant ground. That one's not your trigger. If it's constantly hot or constantly ground, it's not your trigger. Um, and really important thing is make sure, you know, find out the specs. Don't worry about your secondary winding ohms. Worry about your primary winding ohms. Find out what your primary winding ohms resistance was on your stock coil and stay within an ohm. Do not go down. You can go up an ohm, but do not go down. I know that this bike, can, this ignition box can take three to four ohms, and I've got 3.6 volt, 3.6 ohms on one coil, 3.2 ohms on the other coil. Um, and they're brand new goddamn coils, so, you know, but, I mean, normally, if I had the choice, I'd find a pair of old Axel single tower coils, which, like I say, unfortunately, they don't make anymore. They used to make them for dirt bikes, but I haven't seen them in years or seen any place I can order them. So the tech coils are about the only game in town for something reliable if you're going to use it as a daily driver. If you're the guy that just fucking fires it up once a, once every couple of blue moons and goes down the beach road, comes home, um, fuck it, get you a set of dinas. Um, and while I've had good luck with the MGOs never failing, I should mention to y'all, dyna coils, me personally, I've never had one last more than six months. Um, and. Over the years, I've probably eaten four or five thousand dollars worth of Dyna coils because I put them on somebody's bike because that's what they wanted. Um, and the bike will come back. Ah, shit! They cracked the coil. Ah, shit! The windings failed. You know. And well, what do you do? You replace them. You're stuck with it. That's out of your pocket. You're stuck replacing the damn things. Um, half the time the places you buy them from will say, oh, you got to send them back to Dinah, and fucking Dinah won't even talk to you about it. So, I mean, it's just a bunch of coils that you eat if you're a shot. Uh, and like I say, I've probably, I've got 10 or 12 sets in a box over there off of my personal bikes that I've tried. I've given them a fair chance. And Dyna coils don't last. Um, they can throw them damn things away. I, mean, I got a bunch of shit left over from the house that made it up here somehow. But, um, alright, let's see. We covered how to find your trigger wire. Um, we covered what the trigger wire is if you're using the tech coils. Um, covered about testing your boots and why you will take out a coil. Um, we covered don't try and clean that shit because it'll just corrode again and you can take out a coil that way and if you lose a coil you can lose an ignition box. Alright so I covered a bunch of stuff there. I hope it helps somebody. Oh and we covered uh, 
why you don't use dyne is if you're really running it every day. If you need a daily driver, reliable transportation, avoid dynas. Emblows, yeah, you got that cold start problem if the battery's a little bit low, but um, they're tolerable at least. Um, the techs, man, I can drop this battery down to 10 volts, hit that starter button, this bike's still going to fire. Alright, I'll let y'all fuckers and fuckheads later.